So let me kindly invite one of the co-authors of the second publication we will be launching very shortly to discuss ways and means of making basic science education more engaging, interesting, and meaningful. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sajit Edri Singha, Senior Lecturer in Anatomy and Clinical Genetics at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Sri Jayavadanapura. Uh, thank you, Riska. Uh, good evening to all of you. So, uh, good evening. And uh, I, first of all, I would like to warmly welcome Professor Surangi Asavardhana, my boss at, uh, at my department, uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Palita Bekon, and my co-author, Professor Indi Karna Tilaka, for guiding us uh, for this uh, webinar and the book launch. So I'll be basically uh, talking about uh, how to make these basic sciences of uh, medical education uh, to make it a little bit engaged, interesting, and meaningful. So when we talk about uh, the anatomy, I would uh, especially uh, concentrate on anatomy uh, because it's a, uh, when we take the medical education, it's a blended learning because all the students will not follow the same pathway uh, to learn the anatomy because anatomy is one of the subjects as Professor Rangi mentioned. It's a subject where it is difficult to study, hard to memorize and easy to forget. So, uh, so there are different learning styles uh, on, uh, among our students. We have certain uh, students will be using uh, visual images uh, to memorize some people you will, will be using auditory and some will use to write and there are different modes of uh, learning uh, in anatomy so when we take uh, anatomy uh, sri lanka because uh, uh, of the sri lankan culture we have a free uh, donation system of obtaining cadavers into our medical schools so we have a free flow of cadavers in our medical uh, school. So basically most of the, uh, almost all the medical faculties are still uh, using these cadaver-based dissections and uh, prosected specimens for their initial first two years of medical education. So, but uh, now the generation is getting changed. The new generation is more technologically oriented. They are more advanced in the mobile phones than us, and the the tabs are also being utilized for the uh, their studying purposes and the learning. So, how do we make uh, it interesting for our students? So here onwards, I will show you few examples that uh, we have implemented at Jawadhanapura, uh, where. Uh, these are time tested and practically possible things. Nothing is impossible if you think out of the box and uh, if you uh, work hard to achieve that goal. So in our dissection halls, we have installed these 3D LED panels where we will be, we have two dissection halls that upstairs and the downstairs, ground floor and the first floor. So we have interconnected them. So, and then we have purchased recommended softwares and videos uh, for the teaching. So these, there are plenty of uh, recommended softwares, but uh, with the cost and everything, we have purchased several, uh, uh, the 3D animated softwares where the students also can easily uh, use these softwares in their mobile phones as well as in the tabs. Now, these are few images that uh, we will be using in our lectures. So all these images, we can rotate. We can uh, rotate by a simple mouse click. So we can use, we are using these things in our lectures also, uh, additional to the PowerPoints, because now PowerPoints are used uh, in our traditional format, but we are, uh, while using the PowerPoints, uh, we are using these uh, 3D images to explain the different aspects to, and to give them a 3D idea. Because especially when you are uh, looking at this ventricular system, it is very hard to uh, develop a 3D image in a student's memory 
unless you read it for several times and make a clear picture so once you show this type of a 3d image and when you rotate and show them this is your uh, particular parts the anterior horn and the posterior horn so the students will quickly remember them so this is a one method we are using at jadunpur to make our basic sciences little bit more interesting for our students so what we are going to do is we will provide our dissection schedules beforehand and we are asking the students to prepare and come and initial 15 minutes uh, on the dissections we will be uh, basically explaining the stuff using this 3d software so uh, for the we have 3 hours or 4 hours for the dissections and we will be showing these 3d images and everything and we will be explaining okay these are the areas that you need to dissect today and these are the components that you you will find during your dissections so the students will be moving in to the normal routine dissections uh, with the prior knowledge okay these are the things that they will find so all these 3d softwares and the images the videos are augmented things that we have used uh, in uh, anatomic cadaver dissections so we will be continuing with our routine dissections and at the same time uh, the lecturers and the demonstrators are going by cadaver by cadaver uh, for the normal cadaver based teaching so which is already happening uh, in every medical faculty so this these things can improve the students interactions they are uh, uh to clarify their normal doubts and uh, to uh, move forward and teach them some clinical applications so uh, we are also using these tablets uh, and screen mirror them to the uh, led panels where when, whenever there is a interesting dissection or a very nice dissection or uh, anomaly we will be telecasting them through these led panels uh, where the everybody can have a look at them so these things have uh, brought this anatomy uh, into a, some sort of a interacting and interesting place rather than a boring normal old dissection hall and also we are using these softwares uh, to teach the osteology where the students can very easily identify the parts of the bones because finding a bone is also a little bit difficult these days human uh, bones because of the current situations and the cost and we are using these softwares to teach them and also the cross sections so we have the prosected specimens and we are putting the same cross section on the screens using the software and we will be demonstrating uh, the same thing in a colored manner so everybody can very easily memorize and understand the structures so same thing will be followed for radiology also we uh, we are having the ct images uh in in this uh, platform where the same image on the real specimen will be put on the screen as well as with the ct image so these are time tested and we are practically using them to make anatomy little bit interesting for our students and now this is another important thing that we have introduced uh uh in our dissection hall where Uh, we are bringing down clinicians all these clinicians are alumni of jatanpura so this is a vertical integration of the medical education where the clinicians come into the dissection hall they will they will be given a some sort of a guideline where what are the areas that you need to be uh, talked about because these are first year students we don't need high five clinical things so just to make them little bit interesting uh, on the uh, things the dissections so the areas of the things that they have dissected they will be talking about the clinical relevance the applied anatomy so this is the vertical integration that we have made uh, which we are talking in medical education and also uh, we are conducting mock vivas uh, with the help of the invited clinicians so before the students come uh, for the main viva in the first mb exam the students are faced uh, two or three mock vivas like this so this will reduce the fear 
So this will make the anatomy as one of the, uh, usually the people think it's a very boring and hard subject. So we, uh, by these methods, we are making the students a little bit uh, fri friendly environment in anatomy department. And these softwares and all the things are now available in the LMS. So whenever the students are free, uh, they can uh, basically use them and it will help to develop their IT skills also. And also currently to make the things interesting, we are using the plasinated specimens, the sheet plasination, where Professor Surangi and uh, myself hold the patent, uh, local patent for this uh, sheet plasination. And currently, uh, Peradenia and Jadanapur both are practicing this uh, uh, tissue plasination processes. So now it is in the system, but uh, we need to uh, expand that uh, uh, structures uh, and the techniques among the other medical faculty. These are the components that we have slowly incorporated in our anatomy curriculum uh, in order to make the system a little bit interesting for our students. And also we have created these videos about the cross sections, which most of the students will find, which, uh, which is very difficult in the exams. So we have simply explained very short videos, five minutes to six minutes videos, and those are available in our faculty website. Uh, faculty YouTube channel. So it is open for all the medical faculties. Anyone can share this. So any medical student, this is the target that we are looking at to share the knowledge in our medical curriculum. Whatever the things that we are generating, it is not only for our students, it is for all the students who are uh, entering to our medical field. These are free uh, uh, videos. So available explaining everything in each and every cross section, as you all can see, all the vertebral levels, we have explained uh, the cross sections. And also, this is another example that we have uh, come out with uh, about vertical integration, where the clinicians and the basic sciences are coming together and creating clinical videos, where the mainly the clinical uh, examinations are going on. And in between, where the basic sciences uh, are coming in, in between the video, time to time, where to revise the basic anatomy. So th these are the components that we have done to make the subject matter interesting for our students. And also, uh, we, have, uh, we are using the clinical cases uh, for our tutorials, SGDs and problem-based learnings. And sometimes we are using uh, MCQ discussions on, uh, with the students at the dissection hall. And this is the latest addition uh, in our department where we are using the ultrasound scan, which will be uh, more uh, frequently used equipment in near future, because in foreign countries, it's just a investigation at OPD. In near future, these ultrasound machines uh, will be uh, handled by most of the MOs. So we, we have a secondhand ultrasound machine, which was donated by a private hospital. So we, we are using this machine to teach not the high five stuff, just to show the uh, contexture of the liver. This is how you will see the liver. This is how you will see the heart sounds you will hear the heart sound. This is how the valves will work. The, those are the things that we are showing. So we are not teaching them to uh, diagnose the pathological things using this ultrasound. So we will be under our guidance. We are giving the probes for the students. So uh, st some students are volunteering. So we will be putting them on the bed. And so some students will be handling the probe and just to see how this liver and the heart and the thyroid gland, those things look like. So just to get rid of their fear among these medical instruments, because this will be a very commonly used a medical equipment uh, in future very soon. Uh, and also, and to make them a little bit interesting at the dissection hall. So all these are time tested and possible things. It's just a matter of thinking out of the box. So nothing is impossible if you work hard uh, to make these things 
uh, possible. So I would like to specially thank my initial boss, who I would consider as my mother of anatomy, Professor Rangi Asavardhana, uh, and also my former head, Professor Harsha Desanek, who has uh, joined online. Under uh, those guidance, we made the, our department up to that level. So here, uh, in a few minutes, uh, we will be launching the next book, co-authored by Professor Indik Karnathilaka and myself. So I would also like to thank uh, my parents, my, my mother and father, who has already joined online, but uh, they don't understand a single word of anatomy because uh, they are not medical people, but uh, they are still listening, even though they don't understand. So, uh, so who I am I today is because of them and my brother and my lovely wife uh, who has uh, already tolerated me up to the maximum uh, <laughs> uh, by because of this extra work that I'm doing. So she, uh, she's also uh, joined online, Sandhunika, thank you so much. And also uh, the Professor Indik Karnathilaka who has guided me and being the backbone of this uh, book. So this uh, anatomy book uh, is the first edition of the upper limb and uh, we will be coming up with a series. So the next would be the thorax and all these uh, soft copies will be available available for you all uh, online from the SLMA website and the faculty websites also. And we will send it uh, through Dulanja so you can uh, share it among your colleagues. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sajid. It was indeed very interesting to see the application of uh, principles in medical education and the strategies adapted. So um, again, it gives me great pleasure to invite our co-authors of the publication titled Anatomy Study Companion, Dr. Sajid Idrisingha and Professor Indika Karnathilaka to present the very first copy of the publication to our guest of honor, Professor Surangi Yasavardhana. publication which stands out for its modern workbook format designed based on key principles of medical education consisting of mnemonics and visuals to facilitate learning something i wish we had while we were in school uh, let me also invite dr palita abekorn to receive the very, uh, second copy of the book Professor Ishan de Souza, maybe I also invite you to uh, receive a copy of the publication. And let me welcome uh, a medical student to receive a copy of the book as well. Congratulations, Prof. Indika and Dr. Sajid. While discussions on timely topics in medical education have been enlightening, I really do hope these publications are only the beginning of many more to come. So congratulations to both of you again. Uh, with this, we conclude today's session. Thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe and have a good evening.